Absolute pleasure to spend some time with the Melbourne Cup winning owner in Terry Henderson. He captured it with Doremus and he's been desperate to get another one on the mantelpiece ever since. Terry, wonderful to see you, mate. And likewise, Richard. Doremus is a long, long time ago. Is it fair to say before Doremus you were more interested in the pacing? Is that right? Uh, for about five years before Doremus, uh, uh, probably in 1991, Thanks to the uh, great uh, powers of Colin Hayes, I swung across to thoroughbreds and trotting and had both codes during the 90s and, and later part of the 80s. Uh, but I think our first Group 1 winner was in Perth with Gerald Ryan, Dan Sadaway, or as some people called him later on, Dan Sadaway. Uh, <laughs> and he was our first horse to um, make a mark. And then from there, we had a, a number of good horses with Colin and uh, obviously then Doremus with Lee. Yeah, tell us about the Doremus story. How did you get involved with him? Yeah, well, it's, a, it's a good story. Um, a uh, friend in New Zealand sent me across uh, a tape, which was very common, as uh, you know. And uh, and I was I liked the horse and I was ready to negotiate. And about the same time, Danny Power, who we all know well in this industry, rang me up and he said, I've got a horse you, could see, you should see. I said, well, come in and I'll show you the one I've got. So Danny Power came into the office, showed me uh, some horse that I wasn't particularly impressed with, and I had showed him Doremus. Then he said, oh, can I take that back and show Lee? And I said, well, this is really going to go to Gerald. Jim, Gerald didn't know anything about it at the time. And uh, anyway, uh, he went back and Lee rang me that night. And I said, this horse just looks pretty good. Uh, and I said, well, I, I want to buy it, but I really need a partner to buy it with. And um, uh, Lee said, I've got just the man for you, um, Keith Biggs over in Perth. And those of us that know Biggs, he, no, you're in for real experience racing with him. And so uh, that was the start of Doremus. And uh, uh, Biggs, he was a, became a great mate and still is a great mate. And uh, we had a, a lovely five years together with that horse, obviously culminating in the Crawford and Melbourne Cup wins and the Crawford and Melbourne Cup seconds twice, both behind Light and Power. Yeah, incredible, wasn't it? Uh, let's reflect mainly on his win. It's Doremus in front inside the 200 metre mark, led by a length to nothing like a Dane giving everything. Then quick ran some coach, but in vintage crop, but it's all Doremus at the 100, raced away three lengths to nothing like a Dane, and then came vintage crop, but Doremus takes the double. Doremus three and a half, nothing like a Dane runs second, vintage crop is third. Quick do, do you have vivid memories of that day? I uh, certainly do. Uh, it was a wet day. It was back in the days when the VRC uh, didn't close their gates until nine o'clock at night. Uh, that's changed these days. And uh, needless to say, um, everybody uh, had looked as if they'd had a good time by nine o'clock and didn't want to go home. <laughs> so uh, Simon O'Donnell at the time actually owned the Middle Park Hotel. So we thought, oh, we'll go down to Simon's place and have a, we'll get a feed down there. Well, that was chock a block. And, uh, yeah. and I'd actually fortunately employed a security guard to keep an eye on the cup. So he followed us around. So 11 o'clock, half past 11, we still hadn't had uh, dinner. So I rang Florentino's up and I, they said, we're shut. And I said, we've just won the Melbourne Cup. And they said, we've opened again. So we went back <laughs> to Florentino's about half past 12 and finally had our Melbourne Cup dinner. It is remarkable what that trophy does. Uh, it opens doors everywhere. Uh, look, the, the most amazing story from my personal point of view is that um, I had a lovely consultancy business that specialised in logistics and uh, we were doing okay and uh, we'd been approached to be bought out a number of times but a, a, a company from uh, France approached us via an English subsidiary. So we had these English guys out here around the spring, the early part of the spring and started negotiations to buy what was called Henderson Consultants and uh, anyway as we're halfway through the spring carnival and halfway through the negotiations for me to sell the business. And as you can imagine, there's a fair bit of emotion going on here. Yeah. Uh, we win the cup. And it was as if the, the, the world just opened up, the ground opened up. From that point on, the due diligence almost went out the wall. They decided <laughs> they wanted to buy the business. And within uh, six weeks, we'd signed the contract and uh, collected the money. And I still give a lot of credit to the sale of that business, to the fact that in some way or other, Doremus gave us a sense of respectability by winning yeah. the cup that we may have had trouble getting from the Poms. That is fascinating, isn't it? And, and when I reflect on Doremus, 
When we talk about Maccabi Diva, of course, of the, the great stayers, I think he's overlooked. Um, he was a remarkable horse, wasn't he? A real unbelievable stayer, 2,400 metres plus. Uh, he he was, and uh, I vividly remember his first race in Queensland because uh, it was late. It was a bit just before this time of the year, and uh, we'd just completed the deal, and uh, Lee said, well, why don't you send him up to Queensland and uh, we'll give him a couple of runs up there. At this stage, he'd only had the three runs in New Zealand, and he went out in, I forget the name, of it might have been the Grand Prix or one of those precursors to the Brisbane, uh, the Queensland Derby at the time. And uh, and I hadn't seen the, flesh, the horse in the flesh, uh, and, and neither had Lee until that day. And I crossed paths with Lee before the race, and before I'd seen the horse, he said, shit, he said, this horse is bloody skinny, mate. He said, with that sort of condition, if you can run in the first five today, you can't be too bad. Well, I think he put, took one and a half seconds off the track record that day wow. and uh, came back uh, after the race, and Lee said, I think we've got something really special here. And... Uh, as it turned out, he got hit in the eye in that race with a shoe and couldn't start in the in the derby. And uh, Lee said that I think it might be a blessing. Let's just look after him. And to his great credit at the time, really the, the plan for him to race in the Melbourne Cup as a five-year-old was outlaid in those early in that early uh, couple of months because uh, we gave him a couple of very easy preps and then we got our desserts uh, as a five-year-old. And you nearly won two cups. Um, I'm reluctant to ask you about the Martin Power Doremus Cup. Well, oh, funny no. enough, no, it's 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 uh, it's one of those cups um, where you think, yes, we've run second, but we've run second to one of the best horses that I've ever seen. Yeah. And for those that can remember that cup, and I can remember it well, um, Might and Power was tackled from the 600 metres onwards relentlessly in that race. And yet he still was able to get to the line and and just beat us. And it would have been a real uh, travesty of injustice had he actually been beaten in that race after he'd, he'd done the work that he did. So most, I would have loved to have won it, obviously. The fact that we ran second under those circumstances never worried me nearly as much as uh, what happened uh, a bit later on with Bauer. Oh, the Bauer story. What a bloody ripper he was. Uh, I'll let you know. If most of us involved in racing, there's always a story behind, you know, what happened. And, and uh, Sarah Kamani was out here with Purple Moon, and uh, I'd identified a couple of horses that were owned by the or trained by the Kamanis that I, I quite liked. Um, and so I thought I'd, I'd talk to Sarah Kamani and I mentioned the horses. And uh, and she said, you don't want those. You don't want those. No, no, no. <laughs> You've got to buy this horse Bauer. And she, she said, he probably won't sell it to you, but you might be able to buy half. So we started the negotiation around the spring carnival time and we couldn't get anywhere. And uh, I said, I'll be over for the um, broodmare sale in December. Yeah. And she said, well, I'll tee it all up and you can talk to the owner and so on. So uh, a lovely guy uh, called Spencer, Spencer Chapman. Anyway, we basically met. We got on really well. We, we did a deal. Um, it had a big carrot for him if the horse ran first, second or third in the Melbourne Cup. And, uh, of course, um, that led me into the Kamani camp. And yeah. from there, of course, um, we had this um, lovely long-term relationship and have raced, uh, I think, together we've probably won 15 or 20 stakes races. Oh, but you didn't win a Melbourne Cup. It's No. <laughs> Was it this? <laughs> Well, it wasn't even that much, was it? Bowers coming down the outside and Sailor Gear. Viewed is clear though. 200 metres to go. Bower ran to second. Sailor Gear coming home hard. Viewed in front. Bowers a big danger. Viewed by a neck. Bowers getting there. Viewed holding on. Bower dives. Viewed a nose to Bower, I think. Well, it, it hurt because uh, we were, I was watching the race with Simon at the time and, and our wives and we were walking down and we thought we'd won. We thought yeah. we won. And, and I, I'm pretty good at Flemington because I've always said that if the backside of your horse is in front, it's actually easy to tell that you're in front. Yeah. So, And, of course, Bauer's backside was in front of you. And so I, we're waiting there, and I'm, I'm pretty much, you know, convinced ourselves that we're wondering, standing on the top of the steps. No, it didn't happen. <laughs> <laughs> and for that next 20 seconds, it was painful. It was painful. 
Well, not only have you found unbelievable horse talent, you've also introduced Australian racing to a very famous family, the Kamanis. We got to know Luca and Sarah, and then we got to know Matt, who's now based here. And in many ways, you launched Francesca's TV career. That's what I'm telling everyone. <laughs> well, <laughs> we we had a little bit to do with that early days, but that was through a couple of mates who made the right decisions, and I think they ended up with the same manager that you have, which was for their great credit. Um, but, um, yeah, the Kamani's are great friends, uh, the whole family. And uh, and Luca now in his dotage is uh, now living in um, the Mountain Abbey, comes to Newmarket just outside of town looking after his brood mares. But if you if you tell Luca that he's retired, you're likely to get a smack in the chops because he thinks he's working harder than ever. <laughs> Well, hey, in a positive from a Flemington point of view, you've won a derby with Kibbutz and you won a McKinnon with uh, a tough warrior, Galo Shop. Some great memories of Flemington wins. Oh, yes, and, uh, yeah. and certainly uh, Managar with uh, Peter Moody. Oh, of course. Yeah. Cup. Um, so, no, Flemington. You talk about the great racetracks around the world and um, and lucky enough I've, I've been to most and, and had a bit of success at some of them. Uh, but you've got the Longchamps, you've got Royal Ascot, York is an is a absolute favourite. And then, you know, you go to Belmont Park in New York and then you go down to um, Chile where they run the Chilean Derby. They've got 28 races on Chilean Derby Day. Great racetracks. Uh, but, you know, there's you know, no place like home. And winning... Winning at Flemington is as good as for me. It's still as good as winning at Royal Ascot. It's a, it's a special racetrack, um, and I think one of the you know the evolution of these racetracks can take tracks in different directions. Um, and to be frank, some of them stuff it up right. um, uh, when they try and sort of bring the track up to the modern day era. But I think uh, what Flemington has done in the last um, uh, particularly last five years with the new the new grandstand has has really added to the the ambience of being at the racetrack to a to a level that still makes it a world class facility both as a horse racing spectacle and a place to go and entertain people. Yeah, what also I've noticed in the last couple of years is by gee you find a different place and a different way to find horses, whether it yearlings, New Zealand, all around the world. You are constantly, you and uh, Shane are constantly just searching for the right horse and you appear to have a lot. Uh, yeah, we've got probably about 100 horses in training and about wow. another 20 or so um, uh, uh, broodmares and young horses. Um, but um, I would get an average of two referrals from places around the world. And as I always say, I always look because you never know mm. when you're going to miss one. So invariably it... Um, eight o'clock at night, I'm doing a bit of research on whether we should take this horse or that horse. And, you know, in this last week, as it so often happens, uh, I've probably had about seven or eight referred through the UK and they've all got telephone numbers attached to them. Um, you know, this is a time when the Australians generally get busy and some of the prices they've been asking are ridiculous. Amazingly enough, only four to six weeks ago, there were some reasonable buys to be had, but it almost seems as though it's a seasonal, like it's yeah. Dutch shooting time when the Australians <laughs> come along, get ready to equip themselves for the spring carnival and the prices skyrocket. But uh, it's the way it's been for a few years now. You invariably get it right. Um, downdraft, is he coming back for this year's cup? And is any any other OTI horses be in the race? Uh, I would hope so. Um, I made a little... winner, surely? Derby win will be coming back. Uh, we won a nice group two over in France last week with a horse called San Uberto. Uh, mm. he's, he's on his way over here. And the horse that won the Belmont Gold Cup for us in New York last year, Amade, he's scheduled to come as well. So we've got five or six that are sort of there for, for Europe. So much depends on the logistics of getting them out here this year because it's not going to be easy. We know that people won't be able to come, but at this stage there'll be at least one flight to Melbourne and there may be another flight to Sydney. Mm. So that all needs to be played out. And, of course, locally we've got horses like um, Future School with Matt Kamani or Young Rascal that we recently acquired uh, through uh, uh, William Haggis, um, um, Azuro, uh, 
Gaelic Chieftain, those sorts of horses, they'll all be there about. Some of them are getting probably to the stage where we won't worry about the car, but certainly the, the likes of the Hackies, Young Rascal, um, Quick Thinker, uh, those sort of horses. Will... Gee, well, yeah. some of them, are, I mean, you think about Young Rascal, you think about Quick Thinker. I mean, if those Europeans, I mean, they're all, gar- with, you know, touch wood, they're guaranteed of a run with their rating. So yeah. you could break the OTI record of four runners in a cup. Well, I'd rather I'd rather it be one winner in the cup. <laughs> I don't need to practice anymore, mate. And I'm, a lot of our partners are the same. <laughs> that would be just sensational. Terry, as always, mate, it's just a pleasure to, to catch up. You're doing some amazing things for the industry. I think you deserve every bit of success that comes your way. Uh, pleasure, Richard. All the best. Mm-hmm.